Hi, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. Welcome to this video. I'm gonna show you how to install Xcode 9 and Xcode 8 together. Sometimes if you're working with older Swift code, you need to have access to both. So I'm gonna show you how to do this so that you can run Xcode 8.3.3 alongside the latest version of Xcode 9, and that's currently 9.1. I'm gonna show you a couple other things as well as where to get the latest betas if you wanna explore those. But right now I have the App Store open. So if you go to your App Store icon, you can go ahead and search for Xcode. If you do that, you'll find Xcode. So you can type in Xcode, brings up the search results. You can go ahead. If you already have Xcode 8 installed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to update first. And then I've already done that. So I already have Xcode 8 installed. So that's right here. And I can just close that right now. So that's the first thing you need to do is you have to update to Xcode 9 on the App Store. Once you do that, it's going to download a 5.46 gigabyte file. So it's a little bit big. It's going to take a little bit of time in order to download and update. Once you do that, the next step is to go ahead and download Xcode 8. And you can't get that on their main downloads page. So if you go to developer.apple.com slash download, so that's up here in the top bar, you do that. You can go ahead and you can download beta versions, but they don't actually show more. There's this little link at the very bottom. You can click on that to see more downloads. That will take you to this page. So this page is all of the downloads from Apple and you can actually search here. So if I search for Xcode 8, press enter, this will give us everything relating to Xcode 8. The last version of Xcode 8 that runs with Swift 3 code is 8.3.3. So this is the version that you're gonna to wanna to download and you're gonna go ahead and download this. Now this is gonna be a special zip file, it's an XIP, which means it's actually, uh, it's going to have a checksum to make sure that it's not being pirated or anything like that, to make sure that it's a legit version from Apple. And it's not, it doesn't have any Trojan horses or anything, because that would be bad. When Xco gets compromised, then your apps get compromised, and we don't want that. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded that. So if you click on this link, that'll go ahead and start the download. And that's gonna take a little bit of time, but you'll get that in your downloads folder. Since I've already downloaded it, I've got the file here. So if I double click on this Xcode 8.3.3.xip, that's a special secure zip file that has a digital signature that's gonna get verified. Now this might take a little bit of time depending on how fast your computer is. It has to then go through the entire thing and make sure that things are what they say they are and that everything sort of lines up and checks out. So this is actually probably gonna take me maybe five minutes or so to do. Uh, I'm gonna jump ahead in time in the video so that you don't have to wait this full time, but as you can see, it's taking a little bit of time now. So once we do that, the next step is we'll have to rename Xcode before we install it into our applications folder so that we can have them side by side. And I'll show you how to do that momentarily. So we waited a little bit, it finished. Now we see Xcode here, all I need to do is click on it, press enter, that'll allow me to rename it and I'll just call it Xcode 8. Once I do that, I've got my applications folder here. So you can just drag it to that or I can drag it over to the applications on the left side. So I'll just grab Xcode 8, drag it over to the applications. Now this will install it, that's gonna take a little bit of time, but when it does that, it might be an instant or it might not be. And if I sort by application, we should see that Xcode 8 is here. And then we can go ahead and open it up and I'll show you what to see or what you see when we go ahead and open it up in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, this is Paul Soltz from Super Easy Apps. Uh, before we go, why don't I just show you what happens? So I've got both Xcodes installed. I'm gonna just jump into Xcode 8 and I've got a project on my desktop that I'm gonna just open up. So if we go ahead and open this up, it should open up in... All right, so this wants me to open up in Xcode 8. I guess it jumped over. I think I have both Xcodes open. So I've got 8 right on the right, and I got 9 over on the left. I'm going to close 9, and we'll try that again. Normally, and I could be wrong, but normally it opens with the current one that's open. Okay, here we go. Um, so it wants to do some things. So I'm going to have to type in my password, always allow. It wants to do some more things. I'm just going to always allow that. This may or may not work. I don't know how many times it's going to ask me. That's three times. Was I typing it wrong? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, I'm pretty sure I was typing it right. 
And so now it wants to update. So I can convert. So the nice thing about this is it potentially can convert this old project I have. This is a number guessing game. And let's see if we can convert this. It'll give me a preview and um, you, you probably won't have to do this unless you have an older project. And the only reason that I can really see you, there's two reasons why you might still be on Xcode 8. One, you're still working on a project that's working with Swift 3 or Swift 2 and you're not ready to update to, to Xcode 9. Or two, you've got old projects that you need to update and a lot of things have changed. So we can go through and use this to update some of the syntax. And it looks like it's updating our IB actions, which is good. And hopefully if we just hit save, I won't have to touch anything and it will just work. But we never know until we actually do it. This whole process is a little bit finicky. And so this is hopefully, I'll just do this update. So it wants to validate. So I'll click that and perform the changes. And then it's complaining about dependency. What is it complaining about? Click on the target. Just trying to build for my iPhone. So I'll switch it over to a simulator. I'll go for the iPhone 7. There's no iPhone 8 on this version. See if that builds. In order to fix this other error, I just need to switch it over to my development team. Um, but since I, I didn't want to have that in the project, since this was something that I gave away to students in the course, uh, I didn't want to have them to always have to change it. So I kept it set to none so that that wouldn't be a problem and that they could set it themselves. So it should work on iPhone 7, but we're getting a build error. I've seen one of these before. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so they added this to Xcode 8. This, so this wasn't in the original project. The original project, you can see, it almost looks like an iPad, but in Xcode was a six, they changed it so that you have like these strange dimensions and it made it really confusing. So I'm gonna switch this over to an iPhone seven. That is totally gonna destroy everything in our user interface. Maybe if we either close the project or open it up again, that will fix it. Everything is just not showing up. I wonder if it's a, a size issue. The font system might've changed so what I'm gonna try is if I click on this and I go to size to fit content, nothing. Can we clear constraints? That's super annoying that it's broken my user interface file. This is not a quick fix for this version, I don't know why I can't see. Everything, it, this must be an issue. Okay, I'm going to see if I can revert this change. And actually this isn't in Git, so that's gonna be a problem. Um, I'll just undo everything, try and save it. We'll quit the project open it up again, see if that internal storyboard issue goes away. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to report this as a bug. So hopefully you've got an Xcode 8 project. I actually don't have any that I know of on my machine. I have Xcode um, 6 and 7 projects. Uh, so I don't know what this is all about. Uh, what I would probably do is just try and open this in the other Xcode. So if we go over here, we open up Xcode right here. We can switch over to this one, see if this works. So it's way more involved than I was expecting. All right, so we can see some stuff. It looks a little bit funky, but at least we can see things. And if we run it, it'll try and run on the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, so that's a little bit of having both uh, Xcode 8 and Xcode 9 installed together. Uh, I've got them both on my machine. If I need to switch to one of them, I can use Command e um, Spacebar and I can type Xcode 8 and I can boot that up so I can run them side by side. 
the the challenging part is having a project that actually works. And I guess I could create an Xcode 8 project, but I was trying to see if I could use Xcode uh, 8 to help upgrade old projects. And my takeaway from that is no, don't ever do that because it's super buggy and it's probably not gonna work. You're better off just updating them straight into Xcode 9, even though it's a bit of a, a little bit more work because you don't get everything automated. Um, it's still a better experience. And we're still having some aliasing issues, which is kind of weird. Uh, if I switch this over to the iPhone 8 and we stop that, hopefully we can get some, get rid of some of those issues. So I'll just bring this back over and we'll see what we see. So uh, I can use both projects. Um, I, I really don't see a reason to stick to Xcode 8. It, it seems like it's pretty buggy. And you can just guess a number, go for a higher number. So that's the game. Uh, it's got to be a little bit lower. I could keep playing this and sort of like figure out what the game is, uh, the number is, and and get it working. But that's a little bit about getting this to work. I'm, I'm not sure why I'm seeing visual artifacts in here, except that this was an older project and things are a little bit funky. All right, so that's a little bit about working with Xcode 8, and there were some developer tools that I had to install. I had one IB outlet crash weirdness. Uh, I'm not gonna probably report this one because I'm never going to see that again is since I'm not going to be working with this old project. Um, typically I would report it, but this one is like just, I don't even know. So many things were wrong and weird. So that's working with Xcode 8. Eight, let me know if this was helpful on how to install it side by side with Xcode 9.